Hey guys, welcome to Building Software with John. Today we are going to launch a Kotlin app using the platform Heroku. So these are some of the things that we're going to need. We're going to need uh, an IDE. My IDE of preference is IntelliJ. We are going to need Spring Boot plus Maven. Spring Boot is the framework that's going to allow us to create um, a controller, which we are going to then hit um, uh, on a real web page and then Maven for dependency management. Uh, we are going to need a GitHub account. That's where our code is going to live. And then Heroku is going to pull that code from GitHub and then launch it for you so that you can um, hit the endpoint and see the final product. All right, so let's get started. Um, what I need to do first is to create a new project, Maven project, um, let's call this Hello, Heroku, Kotlin app. Hello, Heroku, Kotlin app. Great. Let's open this up in a new window. I'm going to get rid of this right here. And um, so the thing is with this is that if you start looking around at the official Kotlin documents, you're going to see um, instructions for setting up uh, a Kotlin project with Maven, which is great. Um, and then if you go looking for um, spring REST guides, and if you want to try and create a uh, RESTful web service, uh, you're going to see most of it in Java and all the dependency stuff in Java. Uh, they are more or less uh, compatible with each other, but not necessarily always. So what I want to do in this guide is I want to show you the way that I have set it up and the way that I think would be um, helpful to set it up so that uh, you avoid a lot of the gotchas and a lot of the issues that I had and that other people have whenever they try and mix Spring Boot with uh, Kotlin and with Maven. So let's go through, uh, this is actually the final product already, but I wanted to go through it line by line so that you understand exactly what's going on here. So um, the first thing we are going to need is we're going to have to specify um, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit so that it's easier for me to go back and forth. Is you're going to have to specify um, your version of Kotlin and your version of Java. Now we um, normally would be using a higher version of Java, but it turns out that Heroku does not like uh, 1.12 or 12, um, so I had to downgrade to 1.8. Uh, we are going to need um, Spring Boot starter parent. So basically what this does is that for any dependency that has to do with Spring, um, it will pull uh, this version from this uh, parent for that dependency. Next, we are going to need our actual dependencies. And I'll go through each of these line by line. I've also um, added comments to all of these and I will make this code publicly available so that you yourself can take a look um, at my comments um, on your own um, without having to pause the video all the time. So this first one right here, this pulls in Kotlin itself. This is the Kotlin standard library. This second one right here is um, Kotlin Reflect. If you need a refresher on reflection, I have added the link right here. But Spring needs reflection in order to function. And this is the Spring Boot Starter Web itself, which enables us to do um, controller stuff and to create a controller that we can actually hit. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a bunch of build stuff. So this looks a little bit intimidating at first, but actually this is really just stitching together um, this stuff right here with uh, more or less this stuff right here. So this is the spring stuff, the spring controller stuff. And this right here is the Kotlin setup stuff, but we are going to go through this uh, line by line. So the application, um, uh, this is the name of the final uh, jar that gets created. And we're just gonna call it application. Um, this right here, this section right here, just specifies that our Kotlin code comes from this directory. And uh, this right here is the same thing before our test stuff. Um, 
and then we have a plugin. This is the Spring Boot uh, Maven plugin that actually is in charge of creating that final jar at the end. And this right here is the Kotlin Maven um, plugin. And in order for um, this to work correctly with Spring, we also have to add this compiler plugin right here called Spring. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm not going to type this all up again. I am just going to copy and paste this into our brand new project. Okay. Excellent. So you'll recognize this portion right here from their website. It's the exact same thing. And uh, like I said before, this is just the spring stuff that we need in order to get it up and running. So here's one of the interesting gotchas. So in Kotlin, all classes are final by default. So you have really two options. You can either pull in this dependency right here, this Kotlin Maven all open. Um, you need to combine that with uh, this compiler plugin. Uh, so you can either do that, add that dependency, or um, for every single class that you create, you need to add the open keyword, which is a big pain in the butt. So we're not going to do that, but I will show you in a second what I mean. So as you can see, um, this thing right here is complaining because it's looking for source main Kotlin and source test Kotlin, but it obviously can't find it. And if you take a look at these uh, folder structures, you will see why it's because right now it's source main Java. So let's rename that. Let's call that Kotlin. Excellent. You'll see that now um, that was found. And now let's rename this one as well. So refactor, rename, Kotlin. Excellent. So now these things are actually nice and clear and no longer red. All right, so that actually is pretty much it in terms of the um, dependencies. But now what we actually need to do, um, by the way, I recommend that you do enable auto import. Um, it'll save you some time from having to re-import Maven dependencies every single time. So now we are going to go to our Kotlin folder here. This is our sources folder. We are going to create a new package and we are going to call this package application. Inside of application, we need to create, um, in order for Spring Boot to be able to start up, we need to create a class. Excellent. And like I said before, I've already done this. So I'm just going to cheat and copy and paste and then explain as I go along. So you may have seen something like this before with Java, um, but this is the Kotlin um, equivalent. Um, if we did not have that dependency that I talked about earlier, so this guy right here combined with the compiler um, plugin, this would complain telling us that um, this is final and it needs to be open. So you would need something like this for every single uh, class, which is a big pain in the butt. So we do not want to um, do that. So we are going to get rid of that, add a dependency in like we did earlier here, and then we should be good to go. So let's see if um, this actually runs so far. So we are going to run it. I clicked play right there. Now there's stuff going on in the background. It's usually faster after um, the first try. All right, so as you can see, everything started up um, perfectly fine, which is excellent, but our app actually doesn't really do anything. Um, so what we want to do is we want to be able to hit an endpoint and then um, have the application say something back to us. So in order to do that, we need something like a controller. So here is the controller that we are going to use. And again, we are going to go through this uh, line by line. So let's add a new class. Let's call this controller. Class. Excellent. And great. So um, what we are doing is every single time we hit API slash greet, we are going to return hello plus your name. So your name is a parameter. It's a request parameter. 
So what that actually is going to look like is uh, first let's rerun this because we added a new controller. Okay, great, so now it's up and running, but how do we actually verify that this worked? So let's go to Firefox, for example, and let's type in localhost 8080, and then API, greet, um, and now a question mark, because this is a parameter, John, and as you can see, it returned hello John, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, that's great. But now, how do we get this locally running app up to Heroku? So this is where a GitHub account and a Heroku account comes into play. So what we need to do is we need to push this code up to um, GitHub in order for it to work. So um, let's go to the command line. Okay, excellent. And hello, Heroku, great git init. Now we want to add a git ignore. Um, I have one from earlier, so I'm just going to copy and paste that. So when I push stuff up, I don't want uh, the IDEA settings and the target folder to be pushed up as well. So now in here, we can create a new file called dot git ignore. We want to add it to git. That's exactly right. Awesome. Excellent. Let's go back to my command line real quick. Let's do a git status. Let's add the pom. Let's add um, source. Butterfingers there. Let's add source. Okay. Excellent. Um, we also do not need this file right here, so I'm going to add that to my git ignore. That's pretty simple, usually. I'll just remove this here. And boom. So now the next time I do a git status, um, that should have worked. And I'm just going to ignore that because I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, all right, great. So then let's go ahead and do our first commit. But um, we are not going to be able to push it anywhere because we have not created a repository in GitHub in order to do that. All right, so now let's go to um, GitHub, and now let's create a new repository, and let's actually copy and paste the name so we don't have to repeat ourselves. Um, this is the one that I wanted, actually. The other one was the final version. So here we go. Hello, Heroku Kotlin app. And this is public. And now we are ready to rock and roll. So this created the repository. Now we just need to hook um, our git right here to GitHub. This is very simple to do. You just copy and paste that snippet I just showed you. And then we can just refresh this. And excellent, great. Well, as you can see, the IML file actually never made it in here, which is good. So that must've just been a glitch with the um, IDE um, or with iTerm. Okay, so now moving on, we need to connect this up to uh, GitHub. So what we do is we go here and then uh, create a new app. Let's call this hello, Heroku. Um, what was the full name? 
cut them out. Excellent. Let's create this app. So what's pretty magical is that you can connect this up to GitHub. So we just click on GitHub right here. We look for um, the repo name. That's not what I wanted. It should be this guy right here. We search. Oh, it found it. Connect. Excellent. We are going to enable automatic deployments. And then we are going to deploy the branch. So what we want to see is what we saw locally. Whenever we hit that endpoint, API slash greet, um, with your name, we want to get a response. But now we want to see this uh, remotely, meaning that um, Heroku deployed this on a server somewhere in the US. Um, so it should be live for anybody in the world to see. So now there's a lot of stuff going on in the background at the moment. Um, it's downloading a bunch of dependencies. And then it's going to launch. And um, one handy dandy thing here is that you can go to the view logs and you can kind of see what's going on. Excellent. This is really good because we see the spring banner. We see things starting up. Uh, nothing is crashing. Um, it's very easy to make things crash. So this is a great sign. All right, great. So now let's open up the app. And then what did we say earlier? It was API, greet, and then name, because that's the parameter, John. Excellent. There you have it. Um, now you can see hello, John, just to prove that this actually works. Let's do Samantha. Boom, that also worked, great. So what we did today in order to recap is uh, we used uh, IntelliJ to create a Kotlin app um, in which we use Spring Boot and Maven. Um, Spring Boot uh, was to allow us to create a controller super easily and Maven was for dependency management. And then we connected this up with our GitHub account and Heroku account. Um, the GitHub account allows uh, our code to live somewhere and then Heroku can pull that code and actually do the launching of the code uh, in the form of an app for us. All right, thank you guys. See you next time, bye.